Hello everyone and welcome to the Anatomy of Knitting episode 52. My name is Erin and I'm going to be your host. Today is uh, November 27th and it's a Thursday 2014 and today is Thanksgiving in the United States um, but in here in Ireland it's just another Thursday. <laughs> um, so I'd like to welcome you to the show. <clears throat> Excuse me. As you can probably hear, I am getting over a cold. Um, it's been quite an eventful few weeks, I'll say. Oh, you're going to have a cat visit. Hello, Ari. Please get off. Please get off my stuff here. Please, please. Please, please. Please, please. Hop up. Come on. Come on. Good job. Okay. Ari cat. Uh, <laughs> so, what? oh, it's been an eventful few weeks. Um, so we came back from the United States, uh, gosh, I think it's about three weeks ago now. Oh, sweet pea. You're very sweet, but I'm just going to have to ask you to stay up here. <clears throat> uh, let's see, we, threw, we flew from Portland to uh, Dulles in the uh, States, and that's uh, one of the airports that serves Washington, D.C., um, and we had a, about a six hour, six hour layover there, which was quite the experience with two young toddlers. <laughs> we, I'll just say that I survived using electronic media. I don't typically uh, let the boys watch uh, much TV at all, um, but I survived with cars, the movie cars. Um, Malcolm has developed a, a huge love of the characters um, and then when we finally showed him the movie uh, he developed a huge love of the movie and uh, I had Malcolm for the journey uh, so uh, we survived with cars <laughs> <clears throat> I'm going to say that we played cars for the entire let's see I think our, t our total journey was about 24 three hours, 22 hours. Um, and we play, I played cars, uh, for him and he saw bits and pieces of it about four times. So yeah, that was quite the experience. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, uh, we got back and then, uh, everybody proceeded to get sick and I'm not sure if it's from, it was, if it was from the, the trip or from, uh, the, the boys go to uh, the daycare, or daycare's called creche here. Um, they go to the creche on Thursdays. I don't know if they got it there, but um, they ended up getting an uh, ugly respiratory thing. Um, Malcolm seemed to do okay, but uh, Nathaniel did not do okay. He ended up needing to not go to the creche uh, one day, and I, I felt so concerned about his breathing that I wanted to take him to the doctor. Um, he was breathing really fast, and, and I don't like to, to sit on breathing, bad breathing situations with children, because I know that's the leading cause of uh, cardiac arrests with children, that, um, you know, children don't have heart attacks or things like that that would cause their heart to stop, typically. Um, so I didn't want to sit on a, on a high respiratory rate. So we saw... Um, we saw a doctor on Thursday, and uh, they prescribed a dose of steroids to help decrease any swelling, and they diagnosed him with uh, croup, um, and then hoped that he would get well after that, um, and I sort of, Friday came, and he still had the high heart, or not high heart rate, uh, high respiratory rate, there's Ari again, um, and, and I just wasn't comfortable sitting on it. So uh, on Saturday, he was, um, when we woke him up, he was coughing, and then after he would cough, he would like <gasps> gasp for air, which was pretty scary for me. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so I took him to um, the urgent care that they have here in Ireland. It's called South Dock, like the, the cardinal direction south. Um, and they ended up finding that he had a double ear infection and uh, determined that he had a respiratory infection. <clears throat> so he got started on um, 
some more steroids. He was on a five-day course and then en uh, ended up being prescribed some oral antibiotics um, and getting a not-quite-two-year-old to take medication three times a day, a total of uh, four doses of a medication, you know, a day for about a week was not super fun. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, the oral antibiotic is, you know, they, they kind of flavor it a little bit, so that was somewhat palatable, but the steroid that he had to take, he didn't like at all. So um, we ended up finishing uh, up that course, and he was doing great, which was um, a relief to me because that Saturday I thought I was going to have to take him to the hospital. I was that concerned uh, with his breathing. Uh, Malcolm ended up getting through the the illness without an ear infection or a uh, croup. So, yay. <laughs> and uh, I was quite surprised that this was Nathaniel's first ear infection because uh, growing up, apparently, I had so many frequent ear infections. It was, uh, it was practically ridiculous. Yeah. Right, Ari? It was ridiculous. So, <laughs> um, I ended up getting the illness just as Nathaniel was getting worse, and then my husband has gotten the illness, and um, the boys seem to have recovered, you know, just in time, I'm sure, to get their next cold. Uh, and my husband and I are still trying to shake it. <laughs> <coughs> so if there are any weird edits, it's because... My nose needed blowing or something like that. Um, so, yeah, I think that's that's the illness update. I'm just so I'm so sick and tired of the boys getting sick. Um, if I count correctly, we have had ten colds since we moved here in April. For, or the boys have had ten colds, which I think averages out to them being sick about every two to three weeks, which I am so completely tired of. I just want my boys to be well for a good chunk of period of time. Um, what else life-wise Ari has been going on? Um, it's interesting. Uh, Ireland is, uh, you know, we don't have Thanksgiving here, so all of the holiday traditions that I'm used to um, aren't happening, you know, yet. Uh, but you know, Christmas things are, are starting to get set up and Santas are starting to arrive and so uh, things will be getting a little more familiar, I think. Uh, Holidays-wise. Okay, sweetie, you can't... I know you want to be, give everything loves, but you can't give loves because my laptop is slightly precariously set up here. <laughs> Excuse me. So I've got uh, a fair amount of show notes here that I wanted to go over. Um, so in this episode, uh, I have a finished object, I have some works in progress, I have uh, a living in Ireland segment, I have some stash acquisition, and I have uh, some quilting to tell you about. So uh, let's get started. <clears throat> so the first thing I wanted to show you is my finished object. This is... A Sock Head Hat by Kelly McClure. I will put it on here for you. <clears throat> I uh, knit this in Highland Handmaid's White Maple Sock in the colorway Fruju. This is the uh, colorway that... Oh, this cat. <laughs> uh, this is the colorway that Heather uh, from Highland Handmaid's uh, created to help um, uh, Wendy, uh, Silly Free Wendy of the Sassy Pants Knitter podcast with some of her medical expenses. Um, and I told you all about that, I think, two episodes ago um, and gave you links of what you could do to help. <clears throat> so uh, I got this skein and I was planning on, on not using it until you all saw the skein, but it just was sitting on my little... Um, living room table here uh, that I sit next to <clears throat> and it just kept calling to me oh this cat Ari I love you please I just need some space thank you thank you <laughs> uh, so I cast this on and it's it's done just as written um, gosh I, it's a free pattern so um, 
oh gosh, it's all crooked now. Let's see. There we go. <clears throat> so the thing about this recording on the laptop, it's very, everything's reversed. So, <laughs> uh, okay. What was I, oh, the sock head hat. So yeah, I, I knit it, it just is written. Um, and I ended up discovering that I needed some hats. Um, when I found all the hats that, that I had, had knit, here were just too small and they end up kind of doing one of these things after a while. Like slowly, my hats, Ari, seriously, go away. Let me see, go away. This is my knitting bag. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> I cast this on and it's done from the, from the bottom, bottom up. So you do, you do some ribbing and then you just knit stockinette, 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 stockinette. And then my favorite part is this is the top and I can't, you know, it doesn't really lie flat because of the way the decreases are, but just the way it kind of spirals, I think is super fun. And I didn't do anything special to get the, to get the yarn to behave like this. It just, this is the way that it behaves. And <clears throat> it's really stretchy, which is great because I have a, a huge head. I think my head is like 23, 23 and a half inches big. So uh, most hats, oh my goodness, this cat. Most hats are uh, too small for me. So I always have to make them bigger. So that is my lovely finished object. Um, the yarn was really great to work with. Uh, I did have one section of the yarn that, you know, the, the plies were kind of messed up, but um, that was just the one one section and I just, I, I don't even know where it is here. I just have, have been having a really hard time with with yarn and, and having a ply be wonky. Um, I had it one, one, one section here, which is, is fine, you know, because the, the one knot in the skein, I think, is the industry standard, and, you know, that's fine. But the one of my object, one of the uh, knitted objects that I've been working on, the socks that rock, I'll just show you that. Uh, I've in encountered, I think, five sections now where the yarn has been messed up. Um, so I am seriously frustrated and not happy with this yarn. <clears throat> because it wasn't a mill end. It, it's, you know, yarn that, that I probably spent $23, $24 on and uh, not very high quality. So this is my stockinette socks, uh, socks that rock. Uh, this is Krabby McHappy Pants colorway and uh, just like boring old stockinette stitch socks that I have been working on. And uh, this is the second one. I have the first one in here. <clears throat> so I am almost there. I'm almost done with this hateful, hateful yarn. <laughs> it's not that it's that hateful. It's just, it's really frustrating to spend, you know, good money on something that should have been a mill end um, when you, you know, I would have, I would have been fine with it had I spent the mill end price instead of the, you know, regular price on that. So that and then you know here's there's one of the knots that you can see I just got I got tired of of having to deal with them so I just left it in there and I'm sure it will shorten the life of the sock but <sighs> it will shorten my life if I had to continue dealing with it and then I, I had to deal with another weirdness right there which is very frustrating was like one ply was a lot looser than the it, <sighs> these socks I hate these socks but they'll be nice and cushy when they're done and they're almost done so that's that's that object but I love this hat I can just my love for this hat is just so much I mean look at this this hot pink stripe there we go so awesome. I love this. Heather at Highland Handmaids did such a good such a good job on these. So there's the hat. I'm just gonna wear it for the rest of the episode because I love it so much. <laughs> uh, so the next thing 
Please move, thank you. Is, I have the book, oh, here it is. I moved over here. Is I have been working on a sweater from New American Knits by Amy Christophers, Christophers. And I am worded, working on, I have it written down as the Benton, but it's the Hopper. That's the, that's the sweater I'm working on. And I'm using the Merino yarn uh, that I purchased here in Ireland. The last time I saw you all, uh, when I was recording with Christine, <coughs> I had finished one sleeve. Uh, so there's one sleeve. I finished two sleeves. Just to show you, there are two nice sleeves, all comfy and warm. Um, I put this sweater on hold to knit this hat um, because I just, I love the yarn so. Uh, and again, the, the pattern is like 18 gazillion pages long, so it seems a little complicated to <clears throat> just has a, have as a pick up put down project like the sleeves were easy to knit because sleeves are sleeves you know you do so much ribbing and then there's a set amount a set way that you increase all the way up to a certain length and then you knit straight until it's time for the, the sleeve cap shaping so sleeves are pretty easy to uh, to to be like pick up put down knitting but the color is not quite accurate. Um, I have natural light coming in from the window, the bay window, um, but I haven't turned on any of the overhead lights. And this looks quite washed out. Um, to compare it in person, this is much more, oh, what would I call this? Not chartreuse. Chartreuse is a little acidy um, than what, what I would call this color, but it's more, it's more rich and vibrant. But you can see how tweety, how tweety it looks, which I like. I like the tweety look. So those are the sleeves. And um, if the stash acquisitions that I purchased don't call me to cast on something new, um, I'll start working on the actual body of the sweater. Let me see if there was anything interesting that I wanted to say about this. I miss Christine. <laughs> she was so nice to podcast with. Um, I know that somebody asked on my Ravelry board if we were going to record again um, because they really enjoyed how we, you know, bantered off one another. And so Christine and I have uh, briefly discussed uh, trying to investigate a way to um, do podcast recordings, you know, remotely with myself here in Ireland and her um, back in the States. Uh, there's an eight hour, <coughs> excuse me, an eight hour time difference between the two of us. So we'd have to work through those, uh, those issues. Um, and, and I'd have to find a way to technically um, record everything. So we're going to uh, let the holidays go. And then we're going to see about maybe trying to investigate making this work after. So that should be exciting. Um, I don't think there's anything here. I thought there was, but uh, there isn't. Um, stash acquisitions. I uh, purchased some yarn when I was uh, home in the States. I knew that it wouldn't arrive to... Uh, my parents house there so um, I had it shipped here the Fruju was one um, and then I found some really beautiful skeins um, from Sheep Spot and this is the yarn company that Sasha Torres has started <clears throat> she was uh, she recorded the Spin Doctor podcast this is her there we go. Sustainable Merino Fingering. And I had, I have the names of these somewhere. Maybe not. So let's, 
that's frustrating. Let me see if I can find them. Huh. Mm -hmm -hmm. My apologies for making you all wait. Here we go. Sheep spot. Okay. I've got the order pulled up. So, <clears throat> this colorway is Still Waters Run. Uh, Still Waters Run Deep. My apologies. And. Get the yeah, that seems pretty pretty accurate. So there's like a black uh, black that kind of turns into gray. There's a purple. There's a dark turquoise, and there's some white running through. And this is uh, I don't know how many plies this is, but it's very. This is a very round looking yarn. Um, it kind of reminds me of Volmai's, but not as cottony looking. Let's see, I'm trying to determine if this is a... Looks like it's a four-ply sock yarn. So see, it kind of has that super high twist, and it's very squishy. My, my sense of smell has not been super great since I've been sick, uh, but it smells delicious. And... She has this cute logo um, of the sheep, and it's it's just a, a whole experience when you order from Sasha. Um, the mailer that she puts out has one of these sheep stickers on it. Uh, you get a little, what do they call these, glassine envelopes um, with, uh, I have a handwritten note, there's some business cards, and then she has, <clears throat> excuse me, a sample card of all of the yarns that she has. So I've got the sustainable merino fingering and then I was tempted by a few of these others that were on her website um, but ended up just getting the sock yarn. Um, but the glassine all envelope also has the, the sheep logo. So cute. And then she also, my apologies for the for the noise, <clears throat> gives you a sample. Let's see if I can get that nicely in focus. Of some wool and the purple the purple bow is a uh, tar targi targi I've never been super sure of what that's called <laughs> targi or targi uh, it's super soft and I was like I was sitting at the kitchen table just like starting to pull it out and and, and draft it and spin it. <laughs> and then this is Ile de France. See the tips here. And it's washed. It smells good. It smells clean. Cheapy. So she gives you a couple of locks to, to <clears throat> fondle. And then this is the other skein that I purchased. And uh, this is called Gummy Bears. And it's just got that that magenta, a blue, a green, and then an aqua. And I'm I'm trying to decide. I think I want this one as a sock head hat. But I haven't. Well, obviously, I haven't cast on. So we'll see. <laughs> but it's so soft. Oh my goodness! Just the just the feel of this yarn is just amazing. I'm really looking forward to to casting it on. Mm, smells good. <clears throat> so that's my first stash acquisition. And then uh, the second thing that I was tempted by, I follow uh, Vullen Vines on um, Instagram, and she was posting some of the uh, yarns she was dyeing for Christmas. And she ended up posting this one, which I fell in love with. This is her Lush Base, which is uh, Merino Cashmere Nylon. And it's in the Holly Jolly. And typically Christmas colors like red, green, and white, I, I just would have ignored. Um, you know, it's not anything exciting to me. But it was the addition of that blue that just made me fall in love. I, I love blue, period. <clears throat> 
So I ended up, and the colors here are pretty accurate. Golden vine yarns. And I know she, I believe she adds something to her, uh, to her, after she, after she dyes the skeins and rinses them, I believe she adds a, an ascent, some oil maybe, I think. I'm not, I know she adds a scent somehow. So it smells really good and clean. <clears throat> so that's, that's the Holly Jolly color. And then I had seen this, uh, hanging out in her store. This is her blitzed base and the colorway is Wicked. And I assume the Wicked is in, uh, reference to, uh, the musical and book. And you can see, oh, I like how the, the sparkly, the Stellina is showing up. Super sparkly! And this is, uh, let's see, 75% merino, 20% nylon, and 5% Stellina. It's very Christmassy. See how the greens... Yeah, the greens are fairly similar. They would work well together. <clears throat> but it's it's in like another kind of Christmas, I don't know, maybe sock head hat. <laughs> I just, seriously, I just want to can't... Uh, cast on everything to uh, be a sock head hat right now. It's it's kind of ridiculous how much I love this pattern. <laughs> uh, so I was thinking that this might be a fun, um, it might be fun, uh, just a fun Christmas hat, you know, because it's sparkly and it's green. It could look like a Christmas tree. And if I were back in the States, maybe I could find, like, little Christmas lights to stick through it. <laughs> I would not know where to look for stuff like that here. <sighs> so that's... Those are my... Yo, my, must, my yarn mustache. <laughs> my stash acquisitions. And that's nice and soft. It smells good. <clears throat> I didn't notice that I actually, like, like to smell yarn until I was watching... Uh, the podcast that I did with Christine and I, apparently all her yarn I just picked up and then sniffed. <laughs> apparently I am a yarn huffer. So, uh, those are all the acquisitions that I got. <clears throat> Next thing I wanted to talk about are the funky things about living here in Ireland. <laughs> um, and the one that's on my mind the most right now is, um, getting a driver's license. And it's not so straightforward, even though I've been driving for 20 years. <clears throat> See, I got my, I got my learner's permit when I was 15. So yeah, 20 years. Oh, there's a garbage truck just in case you hear the noise. Um, apparently because the United States, uh, lets states decide the, what, people need to do to get driver's license. It's not a national, there's no national standard for driver's license. Li driver's licenses, I can't just go into the licensing bureau here, show them my US driver's license and be like, yo, give me a driver's license. Um, I have to jump through all the hoops. And there are a fair amount of hoops that I have to drop, drop uh, drive through. <laughs> There are a fair amount of hoops that I need to jump through to get a license here. Uh, the first thing I have to do is take a driver theory test. Um, and they give you, let's see, I've got, they give you a couple of books. Here's the official driver theory test questions and answers. And there's a bank of like 300 uh, or four, no, there's a bank of, 800 questions that they can use and apparently they're all in here. So if you memorized everything um, You know, you'd be good uh, They also have a disc that uh, you can use to um, look at uh, You know take practice tests, which is what I've been doing um, and I've been passing them a lot <clears throat> I'm what I've been trying to do the garbage truck again. Um, is my husband took this about a month ago and he got one wrong. So my goal is to get a perfect exam so I could do better than he, he did. Um, 
but they, like, a lot of these questions are, I mean, it's, of course, the questions from the, the exams that I took in the States were kind of silly. Um, but it, it has things like, here's this picture, uh, and you're intending to turn right. What should the car driver do? Uh, you know, silly things like that. And then there's, like, hand signals I need to learn. And, and most of the people here in Ireland drive a manual car, a manual transmission car. I thought that having to learn a manual and having to get used to driving on the opposite side of the road and getting used to living here and having the babies the majority of the time, I didn't want to have to try and learn driving a manual on top of all that. Um, so I, I have an automatic car here. Um, automatic cars, like in the States, are a little bit more expensive, but not super more expensive. Um, so a lot, some of the questions don't pertain to me. Like, what do I do when I stop the car? And it's like, you know, you turn off the in, turn off the engine, make sure the clutch is something or other. I, I know the right answer to that, but I, you know, I don't have to do it in practice. <sighs> so that's been going through all of these questions has been, um, kind of fun. And then you also get learning to drive a car. Because they assume uh, everybody who goes through this uh, doesn't know anything about driving a car. Which is a good assumption. Um, there's like commitments that you have to make. I commit to, I will never drive, I will drive only when I am physically fit to do so. I will never ever drink and drive. I will never ever drive while under the influence of drugs, legal or illegal. See, all these commitments that you have to do. <clears throat> so that's step number one to getting your license. Step number two is that you have to uh, have instruction, like actual, you have to have 12 hours of instruction before you can sit for your exam. And this just seems like a huge moneymaker scam to me. <clears throat> you know, why they, do, why they would... I'm, in my mind, I understand why they do this. They want everybody to learn to drive to the standard that that they've established. You know, they you need to do X, Y, and Z before you drive, you know, through this inter intersection, which I totally and completely understand. However, requiring somebody who's been driving for 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, it just, it just seems frustrating that I have to spend the money to do this. Because, of course, those driving, uh, the driving lessons are not free. At, they're actually about 50 euro an hour, I believe. Uh, 50 euro for an hour or two hours. Either way, by the end of the time of the 12 hours, you've probably spent close to 400 euros. And I think euros right now are $1.30. So just kind of calculate that in your heads. Um, and then once you get the 12 hours, you, so you have, there's a book that you're drawing, in structure. I, I don't have, I don't have the, uh, the hour log book, but my husband does. This is his. So you have your essential driver training learner log book. <clears throat> and then they, you know, there's like self-analysis and there's, there's different lettuces that you go through and then you're. Instructor, instructor then fills out uh, things that you've done. I mean, it's it's just, it's a good idea, yeah. I, if you're brand new to driving a car, I think it's a great idea. But having to have to do this, it's a little frustrating. <clears throat> oh, here's the essential driver training, your learner driver information booklet. But the thing that really is frustrating about getting a, getting my learner permit, because I have to get a learner permit before I can get a license, the fresh, okay, oh, this is it. This is, so I have to go, to, <laughs> I didn't intend for this to turn into a rant, but it's a little bit of a rant. I have to go take my exam. I'm taking it Saturday. 
I'm not taking it at their at their version of the DMV. No, that would be too easy. I have to go to uh, one of those locations like uh, it's a pro metric testing center, which I do believe they have in the States. And I think I took like my NCLEX there to get my nursing license. So it's like a testing center. All they do is give specific types of tests. And I can't remember like what other kind of tests that you have to that you can take there. Probably more licensing exams. Um, like professional licensing exams. So I have to go there. I have to bring a picture, like a photos that I had taken, like passport photos, which I had done, I did at the grocery store today. I look like a serial killer in them. I am not kidding you. I might even, wait, I'll put it somewhere here. Serial killer right there, right? <laughs> I have to take those, which they then will attach to whatever piece of paper that I uh, get saying that I passed. That's all they function for, is to prove that you're you, and then they, I don't know, staple it, scan, I don't know what they do with it, but they somehow attach it to the paperwork that says that you passed. Why they can't take a picture of you there using a crappy webcam and then put it on the, you know, put it on the printout that you get, I don't know. I don't know. And then, <laughs> then I have to take this paper to the DMV or their version of the DMV. Maybe it's the RSA. I, anyway, I have to go to a different place. And I can't do it on Saturday because I already have plans after the test. So I have to take my time out, get a, an appointment at their, at their version of the DMV, <laughs> turn my paperwork in that says I passed the test. Uh, I don't know, probably give them money and, uh, I don't know, jump through more hoops. Uh, oh, I have to get, I have to get a letter from a doctor saying I wear glasses. They can't, they don't just, they don't do any sort of eye exams there like they do in the States. So I have to, I have to go to the doctor. I have to then take this paperwork, the past paperwork, and then submit it to their version of the DMV, and then I'll get my learner's permit, which I don't think I get in person. I think they then send it to me. I think they get, I get like a little paper, floppy printout thing that then I can hold until I get the permanent one in the mail. Why this is so difficult, why they don't have it all just in one place that you can do all at once, I don't know. It's very frustrating. I miss convenience. That's the thing that I've learned about living here in Ireland is that I miss convenience. <sighs> I miss having having the opportunity of, of when I'm done. See, I go to these quilting nights on Mondays, and I've just been longing to go through a drive through and get ice cream. I haven't done it. I just, I've had this longing because, you know, it's easy to do at home to just... You know, oh, I feel like ice cream. Oh, well, I'll just go, I don't know, Dairy Queen or whatever. Uh, I'll frosty it at Wendy's or something. <clears throat> it's just easy to do. I can't, I can't go stop and get ice cream or go pick up ice cream to take home on the way home from this meeting. That's been... It, that's one example. The other thing, there's just, there's no like crap, there's no Michaels, there's no Joann's, there's no store like that here. So... Getting, getting lights, if I wanted to knit that hat into like a Christmas hat and then get little teeny lights to put in, I don't know where the first thing I do to get those. <laughs> so I miss convenience. It's really, it's a lot harder to live here than it is to live in the States. Um, I feel a little, a little here we go. Uh, so, yeah. I didn't intend for this to become a rant about things that I miss and don't like about living here, the hoops that I have to jump through. <sighs> so, I will stop. I will stop there. It just, it just burns my bottom that I have to go to a separate place to get, a, to get my learner's permit. It just... Why can't they do it all in one place? Why? Or have the two, two places talk to each other. Like, you know, here, let me send you 
the proof that this person passed the exam and send you the picture too. I was going to talk about the tea that I drank, but I think I've gone on uh, enough about the funky things about living here in Ireland. Uh, next time I record, I'm going to talk about Christmas stuff because that's that's been a little bit interesting too, uh, but not today. Uh, let's see. First thing, I'm going to talk about quilting now. First thing I was going to talk about uh, is my mom's present, Christmas present, which is uh, something that I quilted. But she watches the show, so uh, I think I'll hold off on that because I don't want her to. I don't want to spoil. Uh, but I did finish this quilt that you can see behind me. This is the Charming Chevrons. It's a it's a pattern that I believe you can find for free on the internet. Uh, there's a tutorial. Uh, I believe Krista Quilts is the person who uh, came up with the pattern. And for those of you who are familiar with quilting, this is done by using. I believe four sets of charm packs. Uh, I can't remember if it's, if it's, so I did, let's see. Let me, here we go. I'll go with this green. <clears throat> that green. Yes, that green. So, um, the way that this is, is built is that this section here, where the, you can kind of see that line, that is called a half square triangle unit. That, and then that. So this this green and then this black here. Um, basically, you take charm packs, which are five inch square pieces of fabric that are pre-cut. Um, I believe I, I marked on the black one. You, you mark on the back of of one of the colors that you're uh, putting together, or one of, the, one of the fabrics that you're putting together. So I believe I marked all the black ones with like a, a white fabric chalk thing. <clears throat> and then you sew uh, down half of that line that you drew that's down the center. You sew down each side of it. <clears throat> and then you cut in between those two lines. And you get two half square triangle units from, you know, the, the so like with that one, it's green and black. Uh, there was a piece of green fabric and there was a piece of black fabric. Um, you then press those open and then the way you put them together is you kind of alternate um, so the, tr the green tri triangle is facing up here, and then this is the second one, and that's the black triangle facing, or the uh, bl black triangle facing up. <clears throat> and so the way you arrange them um, makes this pattern. I kind of think of it, it might have been just one charm pack of the black and one charm pack of the colors. Um, the colors are uh, Robert Kaufman Kona Cotton, I believe it's their primary um, line. It, it's just, it's, it's the, all the colors that come in that, that predetermined group of colors, the primary pack. Um, so I had finished the top when we were still living back in the States. Um, and then since we have been living here, I have, uh, done the, uh, attached the backing, which is, you can't really, you can't see it because the, the, they're like little tiny gray dots of circles, but it just looks black to you. Um, and then I quilted just the black parts with some some straight kind of zigzaggy meander. Um, and then I left the colored areas unquilted because I didn't I didn't have thread that that would match all of these colors, so um, I decided to leave them open. So uh, that's one of the finishes that I have had since we last recorded. Uh, my mother's uh, quilt is the second, but I'm not going to show that. Um, I will show you what I am making for my brother, which is right here. Oh, excuse me. So my brother is a huge Doctor Who fan. Um, it's getting nice and bright outside. Um, and he in particular loves the fourth doctor. And the f last time that my family was here, um, in September, they, uh, were, um, visiting us and then they were going to a Doctor Who, um, convention in, in London. Um, so when I, uh, was in the States this past time, um, I had found this, this quilt pattern prior to going and then ended up finding um, the colors that I needed there to make. Let's see if I 
can get this. <clears throat> so it is a TARDIS quilt. And this, this, ooh, the police box part. And then this written part here, the telephone free, for use of public, for public. <coughs> uh, that is a fat quarter from Spoonflower that you can get. Um, so it's just a big, it's a big TARDIS. Um, and then he, because he also loves the fourth doctor, um, I ended up finding this fabric on Spoonflower as well. It's, it's the stripes of the fourth doctor's scarf. Um, you may have seen the, some of those scarf patterns, um, on Ravelry or, or any of those websites, uh, knitting websites. The, it's like a 12 foot long scarf, which somebody tried to get me to knit for them. Um, and I said that they wouldn't be able to afford it. Uh, and then they were like, try me. Uh, and then I haven't gotten back to them because I would be like, yeah, you're not related to me with blood. So, uh, I'd charge you probably a thousand dollars. And then on the back, this is also from Spoonflower. It's the sonic screwdriver. You can see a thread tail there. And then you can also see the quilting that I did. Um, this is the fourth doctor's uh, sonic screwdriver and it says born to sonic there. I just, I saw this fabric and I just thought it was so funny. So I ended up, up buying, buying it so I could do the, uh, the backing for the quilt. And then uh, this is just some fabric. I was trying to find like space themed fabric to be the background, um, but none of it, none of them looked very good. So I ended up just getting kind of the squiggle black gray fabric, which turns out really good because you can't really see where the seams are, which is very convenient. There's the lantern. And then there's just a lot of really long seams. It's hard to, it's hard to give you a, a whole view of it. <clears throat> but uh, I could put the picture up somewhere around here. Um, so I'm just working on, uh, on finishing the binding. That's the last part in making a quilt. Um, you know, you see, you can see the quilt sandwich here. There's the top, or that, uh, that's actually the binding, but there's a, the top, the batting, and then the, um, the, the backing. And then you just cover it up with the binding. So I'm just working on that. I'm, I'm doing a, like an arm's length of thread every night. Uh, so I haven't gotten very far. Just there to, to there along the top side. So I'll be working on this for a few days. <clears throat> I just have to get it here, get it done before my family arrives here um, in December. They'll be arriving on the 14th so I've got plenty of time to to finish the binding there so that's my brother's Christmas gift Get that. <sighs> there we go out of the way um and then I'm, I've also been working on the Christmas gifts for the babies um I will put uh photos up somewhere here as well um Malcolm has uh, a monkey quilt that's going to be like a little bit sh smaller than a twin size. And then Nathaniel has uh, kind of like a safari animal quilt um, that's a chev kind of like this one, chevrons. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, that I, prior to recording, um, pin basted together. So uh, Nathaniel's quilt is smaller. So as soon as I'm done uh, re recording this and editing this and posting this, um, I will uh, go work on starting to quilt his quilt. Um, the babies are at uh, the crush today, so I've had the whole day to be able to get to do stuff to catch up on and housework and recording for you guys. So, oh, last thing I wanted to talk about um, was this website called Mass Drop, and that's M-A-S-S-D-R-O-P. Um, I've utilized this website for a few things. Um, I purchased some uh, wool batting to use for all of the quilts. Um, unfortunately, living in Ireland, it takes a long time for things to get here because they have to go through customs and everything. So uh, I ended up thinking that I might not have enough time to quilt everything 
so I used just some cotton cotton batting that I had for my brother uh, for my brother's quilt. Um, I just used some cotton for his. I was originally going to use wool batting, uh, but unfortunately, I I didn't want to wait. Um, but it arrived yesterday, and um, let's see if I can get on some things. There we go, mass drop. So they have different categories of uh, things that you can buy. <clears throat> The internet is being slow. So there's a, an audiophile category, there's a crowdfunded category, uh, everyday carry, fashion, hobby shop, mechanical keyboards, tech, vaping, and uh, writing. Um, and I've mainly used this for some quilting um, uh, gadgets, uh, gizmos. I used it for the wool batting, and I believe I saved about 40% um, by getting the wool batting here. Um, they, they create like these different kind of bundles um, that they you can that they drop <laughs> and then you purchased and depending on the number of people that purchase the item um, the price then drops. So like right now there's a there's a Lizo TG 1600 Pro Smart Iron um, it is originally $200, um, and then the three prices that they had were $134.99, um, if so many people purchased, and then um, once they reach the number, all the people have purchased, they've, they've, right now all of the people that are required to get the, sm the smallest price unlocked have purchased, so I don't know, you know, like, 20 people have to purchase to get the $134.99, and then maybe 35 people have to purchase to get the $129.99, and then right now 54 people have purchased uh, to get the $124.99. It doesn't say right now how many people that they needed to to get to get all of the, <clears throat> excuse me, um, all of the, the well here, here's, a, here's, Here's another one that nobody's uh, purchased yet. So, uh, Zaza Zoo yardage uh, looks like uh, like safari animal yardage. Um, it's MSRP is thirty three dollars right now. It's eighteen ninety nine. They need ten people to purchase to get that price. Um, for twenty people to purchase, it'll the price will drop to seventeen ninety nine. And then if they get thirty people to purchase, the price will drop again to sixteen ninety nine. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, it's it's kind of I wouldn't say it's like crowdfunded, but it's the more people who buy, potentially the small uh, price will go down. Um, so I've used this to buy the wool batting um, that arrived. I've used this to buy rotary color cutters, which I believe I got at sixty percent off. Um, and then I've also purchased some uh, some thread as well. Um, there was like a thread bundle that you could buy, which I, I purchased. Um, so I just kind of keep an eye out for uh, mostly tools that I use to quilt. Um, so like maybe rulers or uh, rotary cutters or thread. I haven't purchased any yardage. Um, but I know there's like a tea section, so if you're really into tea, you can, you can um, investigate the things that they have. Um, and then there's there's always a bunch of headphones, which I don't really know all that much about, um, but they seem really nice. <laughs> uh, and there's watches, and there's some bags, um, and some, some jackets, um, some, some knives, there's, there's writing instruments. Let's see, um, that seems to be, it's just a neat, a neat thing to check out if you're interested uh, for the crafting stuff. Yeah, there's some. There's a coffee brewer. Uh, there's a micro a studio microphone. Uh, there's some tea, and things range from price for from, you know, I see one ten ninety nine, um, and that's not the lowest price that you can get. Um, and I've seen things that are a few hundred dollars as well, but everything's at a at a discount because you know they get a big group order together. Um, the only downside is that it can take a little bit of time. So it's something if it's something that you need uh, right away, this would not be the website for you. But if you have 
lots of time before you need something or you don't there's no time crunch at all um, then I would suggest uh, doing this because I've received um, there's been a few emails like when they've placed the order with the manufacturer sometimes um, the manufacturer hasn't been able to to get all the order together quickly so um, they've had to they've had to delay shipping some things like I think that happened with the thread they had the manufacturer had a an issue with with getting all of the order together so they only they shipped a partial order and then um, they finally shipped the rest and then the, the mass drop ships it to you um, and then I I have to uh, so I waited almost a month for the batting to get here uh, after they shipped I ordered it I ordered the batting way back in late October and I didn't get it until yesterday which is the 26th so about two months um, and I knew it would be here prior to Christmas um, so uh, the, the boys quilts really aren't on a time like they're on a time crunch yes because they need to be they need to be done by Christmas but they don't have to be done by Christmas because the boys they're not old enough to you know understand that mommy's quilt wasn't done for your for your birthday they would have been fine this year, but, you know, knowing that they weren't done. <laughs> um, let's see. So, yeah, I really like Mass Drop. Um, I think if I were lived in the States, I'd like it more because the shipping wouldn't take so long. Um, but that's that's just the, the thing about living over here. Um, so, I believe that's everything. I have yammered on uh, for a while. So, I'm going to wind it down and the light isn't as good because it's a lot more out, uh, overcast outside. Um, I hope you all have had a great Thanksgiving for those who celebrate. Um, other than that, uh, those who don't celebrate, I hope you um, have had a good Thursday and um, I am going to do my best to try and record uh, a little more often. Maybe not so the, the show is about an hour long, maybe so they're about a half hour long. Uh, but again, my family gets here the, the 14th of December, so I don't know. Once they're here, uh, I believe they're here until New Year's Eve. Uh, once they're here, I don't know how, if I'll have time off to, to record. So, um, I'll do my best. And I would say expect to see another sock head at, <laughs> uh, with the next, uh, show. So, that's it. Hope you all have had uh, a good day, and I will speak to you next time. Uh, thank you for joining me. Bye-bye. That's okay. He'll brush your face. Brush up, brush up. Brush up, brush up. Good job. Kisses. Thank you. <laughs> oh, now Matt's gonna brush teeth. Just got a kiss. Brush your brush up. Brush. Brush. Here's a second toothbrush. Here. Here. Yes. Yeah, there's two of them. Brush your brush up. Brush your brush up. Brush your brush up. Oh, two good tooth two toothbrushes. <laughs> brush your brush up. So cute. Brush. 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 Baby. Baby. Where's the baby? Where's the baby? Bus. <laughs> Grabby.